Okay, so we're going to look at um, special triangles and unit circles and how they kind of relate to each other, or at least how they've been related to each other. Um, a unit circle is a circle, obviously, and it's built around uh, a Cartesian plane. So you have your x and your y axis, right? So those are going to be important because we're going to use those as variables. And usually the unit circle is a circle that's written with a radius of 1. Okay, but you could technically have larger circles around. Okay, depending on what, uh, how we really want to work with those guys. Okay, so the usually the idea and the reason they call it unit, as in one unit, is the circle's radius is a one unit all the way around. Um, so when we go to put in our special triangles, our hypotenuse always happens to be one in those cases. Okay, so let's talk about what the special triangles are to start. Um, they're both right angle triangles. Okay. So we have a right angle, one of them is 90 degrees. Um, one of them is an equilateral triangle. Okay? And what that means is that these two sides are the same distance. I almost sneezed, I didn't. Okay. Um, so what that means is these two have to be the same. And if this is already 90, the two of these together must add up to 90. So when we divide in half, we get 45 degrees. And we get 45 degrees. Okay. And in our other one, we have 60 and 30. So the idea is we build up from 30 plus 30 is 60 plus 30 is 90. So we go 30, 60, 90 in that. Um, and you can look at this. This is the larger of the two angles, right? This face or this side of the triangle is larger. Therefore, this must be the 60 degrees. It's a larger opening. And this one must be the 30 degrees, okay? Because the opposite side is shorter. Think of it like a, like a mouth opening, right? If I have a mouth that opens that much, or have a mouth that opens that much, clearly this must be the bigger degree angle. Okay, so that's one way if you don't memorize exactly where they are. Um, from that, we got to choose our um, our side lengths. And so this one's usually memorized by saying that these two side lengths are one and one. And then using Pythagorean's theorem, you do a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. This side becomes root two. Okay. Um, and this one here, uh, same idea, we have a side that's 1, we have a side that's 2, and we have a side that's root 3. And we have to figure out, okay, what order to put it in, okay? So assuming we don't have this memorized, we have 1, 2, and root 3. Which of these is the largest? Root 3. Mm, let's find out what root 3 is. Two, three, I don't know, I just guessed. It's a good, yeah, it's a, the number looks larger, but let's find out what actually root 3 is. Uh, is the equivalent enough? Do I have roots on here? Yeah, it is. Root 3 is 1.73. So I didn't so actually yeah. write it in the order. So that leaves us with number 2 being the largest. So a hypotenuse is always opposite of the 90. Therefore, this must be the side that's 2. Which is larger, 1 or root 3? Root 3. Three. Root 3 was larger. So because root 3 is larger, it must be opposite of our 60 because the 60 has the larger opening. Okay, so we do root 3, which means by deduction we have one on this side. Now, if we look here, neither of these hypotenuse are equal to a unit. Okay? Uh, and that's going to be important because we're going to be able to scale this. Do you, you guys ever remember doing similar triangles in, um, in uh, I think it would have been grade 10 would have been something you touched on. Okay? So let's say we have similar triangles. So I'm building a triangle, same angles, but much, much smaller. A triangle and we'll build another one again smaller angles being the exact same and since you guys are used to writing in radians also okay um, tactically 90 degrees would be pi over 2 okay 45 degrees would be half of that so that would give us pi over 4 and pi over 4 for the uh, radian measures of these angles okay and what we're going to do is we want our hypotenuse in this case to be a value of 1 okay so we need to use ratio to go from root 2 to 1 what do we need to since we're shrinking divide root 2 by to make it a 1 root 2, root two. Yeah. root 2 divided by root 2 would be 1 so with that being said um, since it's a similar triangle we need to take both of the other sides and do the exact same thing with the ratio so now we have 1 over root 2 Maybe not as easy to work with, but it's still technically a side length. Mm -hmm. And same idea here, 1 over root 2. Now, this is a unit, and that can kind of fit into our unit circle, okay? Um, same with this one here. 90 degrees is technically pi over 2, okay? Um, 
30 degrees is a third of that. So we would take the number on the bottom two and multiply it by three, so we get pi over six, okay, as a measurement. And 60 degrees, you can do a bit of math to figure it out, but it ends up being pi over three, okay? So those are the other measurements if you're gonna write them in radians. And same concept. If we were to take this and turn it into the value of one, we use ratio, so what do we divide two by to create one? Is that an idea? Two. Two, very simple, right? And whatever we do to that side, we've got to do the rest. So this one side becomes one over two, and this side becomes root three over two, okay? So now it's a little simpler to relate to the angles now that we've built like similar triangles. These are the ones that are usually memorized, and it's kind of, once you have these two memorized, you can convert pretty easily, okay? Um, when they talk about sides of a triangle in terms of a unit circle, what they're doing is they're building right angle triangles in the circle, okay? So we have a right angle triangle, or 90 degrees, you could say. We're always referring to this angle in here, okay? The angle around the origin is the angle we're looking at. So the very first one, this angle, it is the smallest, would be a 30 degree angle, okay? So if I was to build this, we know that this is one unit, right? We said that this is one unit long. So with that, we can relate it to this triangle here, okay? We have one unit, that's good, the hypotenuse is one unit. So the side that is, um, well, how do I describe it here? Um, it's technically right beside it, but the height of it would be this side of this triangle, so the height would be a half in this case. And our um, base, or whatever you wanna call it, would be root three over two. Those are also known as this, is along the x-axis, so a lot of times they'll call this the side x. This height here would be like along the y-axis, and this hypotenuse would be known as the radius. It's the radius of a circle, that's why they use r, okay? So a lot of times they'll try to relate things like um, sine theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, okay? So opposite, no, sorry, opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite of 30 would be this height, which is our y, and the hypotenuse is the radius of the circle, which is the r, okay? If they were to do cos of theta, <coughs> excuse me, adjacent over hypotenuse, right though, um, adjacent to this angle here, okay? adjacent to this angle is the base of the triangle, so it's side x. Hypotenuse is still the same, it's the radius of that circle. And if we were to deal with tan theta, tan is opposite over adjacent, or we already know the opposite is y. The adjacent um, is x, okay? And then, um, if you're trying to work from those, since you guys have already been introduced to, I should move this down, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, let's move these down, we can easily relate those because we know they're reciprocals, okay? So, because this is related to cosecant theta, it would be equal to the reciprocal of this, okay? So instead of y over r, it would be r over y. If we were to relate cos, cos is related to secant theta, it's the reciprocal of it, so the reciprocal of that would be r over x. And same idea if we have cotangent, cotangent theta is equal to the reciprocal of that, which is x over why? So once we have these ratios memorized, whatever it is, figured out, okay, and once we have these special triangles figured out, okay, if I were to put in 30, so if I were to say cos of 30, okay, we know that 30 degrees in a unit circle would be opposite of a half, and the hypotenuse would be 1. So we would have 1 half over 1, which ends up being a half. So apparently sine theta if our radius is one, is equal to the value of the half. So we can just start kind of plugging things in and out. So using that same concept, and I know we've been doing this pretty long, I'm gonna try one that's somewhat difficult. Let's say secant, um, secant 45 degrees, okay? What is it equal to? Well, we know secant is the radius over x, right? so we can already put that in, r over x. Okay. And 45 degrees. So we're going to have to build another special triangle in here. 45 degrees. Go straight up and down. Well, 45 degrees, if the radius is 1, 
Okay, so if this length is 1, this side is 1 over root 2, and the other side is 1 over root 2. So we know that both the height and the length are the exact same. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means x and y are both the exact same. So we can plug in for x this idea of 1 over root 2. Okay, and the r is 1. So 1 over 1 over root 2. We've got to do a little division of fractions here. 1 divided by 1 over root 2. When we divide fractions, we turn into a multiplication question and we invert. So root 2 over 1, which is just root 2. Mm -hmm. So 1 times root 2 is root 2. So secant 45 is equal to root 2. Mm -hmm.